Thank you very much, Catherine. You know, just before I came in front, I had just a, a talk with uh, Lawrence. And he said, Melvin, take your time. You can even preach for two hours. I said, that is great. Yeah, so be ready for a two-hour, you know, sermon. Quickly, let's turn our Bibles. To 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we are going to start reading from uh, verse 16 up to 21. I'm using NIV. If you are there, so from now onward, we regard no one from worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be seen for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You know, I was joking by saying I'm going to take two hours. I will try, you know, just to take a few minutes to share some of uh, the things that the Lord has laid upon my heart, especially, you know, this time that I've been here. For those who may want to have the heading of my message, it is heading out with hope as ministers of reconciliation. As we come to the end of, uh, you know, our meeting here, I want just to remind each and everyone of our vision. Because the Bible says where there is no vision, people perish. And we are saying we want to see vibrant communities of Jesus followers among the least reached people groups. As I started, you know, contemplating and thinking about this vision, I came to understand that this is not OM's vision. This is God's vision. Because sometimes we may think this is a, a new vision, but this is God's vision. I looked into Revelation chapter 5, verse 19. What is God's vision and God's mission? And I saw in uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, the Bible says, and they sang a new song, saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God, the persons from every tribe, language, and the people, and the nation. Then chapter 7 of the same book of Revelation, he says, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And when I read this scripture, 
I started to ask myself to say, what is God's uh, vision and God's mission? And I came, you know, to these uh, points. I said that God's vision and mission is number one. He wants people of all nations to worship him in his spirit and in truth. That is what John chapter 4 verse 23 says. He wants to have fellowship with his creation. We see this from uh, the book of Genesis. You know, God wants a fellowship with uh, his creation. He wants to establish his kingdom that was usurped by the enemy, where a man willingly surrendered, you know, the authority that God gave to man. And as I started and I continued thinking about this, I said, let us maybe try to do some uh, word study about this word, you know, vibrant. And today I was blessed when I sat with uh, my sister from Madagascar, where she said, you know, this is one word that they are struggling, you know, to interpret or to translate in their language. Because it means, you know, shaking, you know. And I said, you know, it is good that, you know, it is talking about shaking because God is going to shake OM so that whatever is not of God should fall out. I don't know if we have thought about that. You know, I looked into some uh, dictionaries, some they said the word vibrant means a movement. And when I looked at that word, I said, thank God, because this is what OM is. And it is my prayer that we are going to be a movement and not a monument. Because if we are not very careful, instead of being a movement, we can be a monument. It is something that is dynamic. Something that is multiplying. It is something that is, you know, vibrating. And if something is vibrating, you will see the movement, you will see the sound. So as we are winding up our meeting here, it is my prayer that we are going out there as a movement. That will continue to be passionate, especially about reaching the least reached people groups. This is our DNA and this should be our passion. We have our core values that we need to, um, to, to embrace as, uh, you know, we go out there and we want to see the vibrant of Jesus followers. But, you know, I want just to pause and ask the question. We want to see the vibrant communities of Jesus followers. The question is, is OM a vibrant community? of Jesus followers. Because if we are not vibrant community, we are not going to make other people, you know, to be a vibrant of community of Jesus followers. You cannot give what you don't have. You produce after your own kind. So this is something that we need to think about, uh, about it before we even think of others. And you know, looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, I, de I, I had to identify about uh, three M's or M that I want to share with you. Number one, even as we want to go and make, you know, uh, vibrant communities of Jesus uh, followers, we need, number one, to understand that uh, we need to be ministers of reconciliation. What does it mean to be a minister? You know, I looked at this word. This word is not about the position. This word is about, you know, the function, you know, the serving. It's about servanthood. So when we talk about, you know, our ministers of reconciliation, if we are to see vibrant communities of Jesus followers, we need servant leadership. If we are not going to be servant leadership, let's forget about talking, uh, uh, you know, about making vibrant communities of Jesus followers. 
In one dictionary where I looked at, they said is a chief servant. And when we talk about, you know, being a chief servant, it means, you know, you have to be uh, the least among, you know, others. And are we willing to be like that? We need to understand that when we talk about uh, being ministers of uh, reconciliation, we are talking about ourselves as messengers. People that carries the message. And as we carry the message, we have got no right to temper with the message. But what is happening today in the world, as messengers, we are tempering with the message of God. We want the message to fit us. Our job is to make sure that we deliver the message according to what God has said in his word. The other thing, as we look at ministers of uh, reconciliation, we need to understand that we are ambassadors. We are God's representatives. You know, when people look at you, they should see God. When people look at me, they should see God. So, do we represent God well? Do I represent God well? Oh, what a responsibility. We need to understand these things. We need to be good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. We need to be people that are faithful because as stewards, we are required to be faithful in the way we execute, you know, the responsibility that God has given us. As if that is not enough, we need to be accountable to one another, but also to God. I have seen believers who says, no, I'm only accountable to God, not to one another. So if we are to see vibrant communities of Jesus followers, we need to be accountable to one another. And what God has done to help us to be ministers of reconciliation, he has made us to be new. Not by what we have done, but what Christ has done at the cross. That's why the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creature. So we need to understand our identity, that as we go out there, we are not living, you know, in the past, but we are living as new people. He has not just, you know, made us new, but he has also appointed us. He has also qualified us to be messengers, to be ambassadors. So my brothers and sisters, let's understand our identity. That's why we need to know even how to carry ourselves because we are ambassadors. We are God's representatives. And as we move as ambassadors, as ministers of reconciliation, we need to be very careful as we minister to different uh, people groups that we should not lose our identity. Because sometimes as ambassadors, we lose our identity. And the people cannot make a distinction between the people of uh, the kingdom of darkness and the people of the kingdom of light. We should not give up our identity. We have a role model, and this is Jesus Christ. The Bible says he came down and, you know, he dwelt amongst us. He didn't lose his identity. The second thing that I want us to look at is that we have got a mandate. We are not just ministers of reconciliation, but we have also a mandate. What is a mandate? We have been commissioned. We have been uh, authorized. You know, Lawrence talked about the authority. We need to know that, uh, you know, God has given us the authority. And when people look at us, they are not going to see us. They will see Jesus, just like a, a traffic officer. You will see that there is this tiny traffic officer standing and is stopping a big vehicle. Not because of uh, who that person is, but the one who is behind. May God, by his spirit, help us to understand that the one in us is greater than the one who is outside. That's why we cannot afford to misrepresent him. We have been commanded, you know, to preach the gospel. 
Sometimes as missionaries, you know, we just think we have only been told to, you know, to preach the, the, the Great Commission. No, no, no. We need to preach the full counsel of God, the full revelation of God. That's what we have been called to. We have to preach the message of the kingdom, not a one-sided message. In Africa, we have got a problem of uh, prosperity gospel. Why? Because the people, they do not understand that we are messengers. All we need, we need to preach the full counsel of God. So if we want to see the vibrant communities of Jesus Christ, we need to preach the full gospel, the full revelation of God. And you know, God is very gracious. He didn't just, you know, throw us like that. He said, uh, there are Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey, not some things, but everything. That is the full counsel of God that I'm talking about. And again, you know, he didn't just give us the command. He gave even himself. He gave his presence. He said, Lo, I'll be with you. So as we move out from this place, I know some of you, you are going to situations that are very threatening, very discouraging. My brothers, my sisters, I want to encourage you that you are not going alone. You are going with God because he said, Lo, I'll be with you. And when he said, Lo, I'll be with you, he meant that you'll be there to protect you. Not only to protect you, but also to provide. Because it is not your vision, it is his vision. And God's uh, work done in God's way will never lack resources. He has not just given that provision of uh, maybe material things, but you know everything that we, live, that we need in this life and in the life to come. Also, he has given us power. He said, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This is the mandate that God has given to us. We cannot afford not to take this mass message, you know, to the ends of the earth. And my last point has to do with a message. If you have experienced the newness, according to the scripture, God has reconciled you. God has reconciled me. And the Bible says uh, he has given me a ministry of reconciliation. It's like he's, he's saying, Melvin, you have experienced what it means to be saved. Now I want you to carry the same message to those who do not know me. I come from a family where both my parents were not Christians. I went to church by, my, by the invitation of my friend. And I know what it means to live in darkness. And it is one of the things that after I gave my life to the Lord, which provoked me to say, you know, my father was a very successful businessman. And he was grooming me to be, you know, the next one. Then I told him to say, no, father, I have heard the call. He was disappointed. He tried to convince me to say, I want you to be a business person so that you know you can support the work of God. And I remember with my zeal of being you know, new in the Lord, I said, uh, how does it profit a man to gain the whole world? And then he fulfills his life. It was not easy. But you know, it's because of what God did. If somebody didn't invite me to church, I don't know where I would have been today. So we have got the message. Whatever has happened in your life, whatever has happened in my life, should be something that motivates you, you know, to help others. And we cannot continue to delay, you know, uh, taking this message to the ends of the earth. Matthew 24, verse 14, it says, uh, Until this gospel of the kingdom is preached to all nations, then the end will come. And I always challenge people to say, who is delaying the coming of Jesus Christ? It is us who have experienced this message of reconciliation. 
And you know, like I said, as messengers, we have no right to distort the word of God. Neither to dilute the word of God or to divert the word of God to suit us. My prayer is that as OM thinks about uh, making vibrant communities of Jesus followers that will not distort the word of God to suit our systems, to suit our own culture, to be politically correct, even when we know that this is against the word of God. May God raise up men and women that will not compromise when it comes to the word of God. Somebody said there are two reasons people reject the gospel, even when they want to believe. Number one, if it appears to be foreign to their culture. As we go out there, let's not preach our culture. Let's preach the Bible culture. Let us embrace one another. He also further said it seems to be a threat when it, it seems to be a threat to people's culture, then they will not get it. All we need is to sit down and contextualize so that people can, uh, you know, understand and appreciate God that is not a foreign God, but is God who is very near to them. In my conclusion, Isaiah 43 verse 18 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness. Brothers and sisters, as we move from this place, to our various places of operations, may we understand that we are ministers of reconciliation. And God has given us a mandate. And, we, and he has also given us the message of reconciliation. May God bless you.